This is the book of Isaiah, chapter 4, verse 1. And in that day, seven women shall take hold of one man, saying, We will eat our own bread and wear our own apparel. Only let us be called by thy name to take away our reproach. All right, I want to give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahasham Yahweh Shai, Bahasham Rahachwadash. Yahweh is the true name of the Heavenly Father in the Holy Tongue. Yahweh Shai is the true name of the King and Savior of Israel. And Rahachwadash is the Holy Spirit, which is the Comforter. Double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone for leading by example in these last days. And Shalom to the hopeful elect. Are you Aki and making your bodies a living sacrifice? And through the Spirit, the name of this lesson is Isaiah 4 and 1 is not going to be a rap video. And this lesson is for new brothers in the faith, brothers that just find out they're Israelites, brothers that are thinking about crossing over and, and preaching this word. One of the first things we find out when we're Israelite is that it's lawful for a man to have more than one woman. Not only is it lawful, but all the righteous men of the Lord, when you go back to Abraham, when you go back to Jacob, all of our forefathers have multiple wives. That's the reason why the nation of Israel even exists is because our, our forefathers, the progenitors of the 12 tribes of Israel, they had multiple women. And so when you come across this info, a lot of times Jake, because Jake, when I say Jake, I mean you Israelites, you people of so-called Negro and native Indian descent, you're the 12 tribes of Israel. A lot of times when our people wake up, we're in this, this feminized society that pushes monogamy, state religion, state marriage, and it's really a breath of fresh air to realize that the Heavenly Father is with masculinity. He's with male nature. He's with a man procreating. He's, he's with a man spreading his seed. That's how the nation of Israel became as the sand of the sea. And so when you come across a prophecy like Isaiah 4 and 1, if you don't have balance, if you don't have the Holy Spirit dealing with you, if you're just some Negro that wakes up to the fact that he's an Israelite and he just, oh my God, seven women. You know, a lot of times Jake, when they're younger in the faith, they really look at Isaiah 4 and 1 like it's going to be a Luke video or, you know, just something from out of a lewd rap video, man. One guy sitting in a jacuzzi surrounded by beautiful women in bikinis. And, you know, there are going to be aspects of the kingdom of heaven that are definitely going to be like that. But when you go into Isaiah 4 and 1, this is not talking about a time of rejoicing. This is not talking about sitting at the club popping bottles. This is not talking about Jake sitting, you know, sitting back in a chair with his arms folded and a black and mile in his mouth and, you know, just big booty Judy to the left and right of him. You know, this is actually talking about a moment of great suffering and sorrow. This you have to look at it like this. Look at the pride that these women have. Look at the pride that American Babylonian women have, especially Judite women, so-called black women. Just look at the level of pride on their faces, man. What is going to happen on the planet Earth that's going to cause seven women, seven Israelite women to completely humble down and cleave unto one man and not even worry about uh, so-called polygamy, not even worry about, you know, this woman and that woman and being jealous of a these women are going to be completely devastated, man. They're not going to have an ounce of pride left in them. So what does that mean? There's, there's going to be a great destruction coming to the earth. And really, it's happening now when you go into uh, Venezuela, Greece, all of these different places. There's turmoils and uprisings of the people. And that's all coming to America, man. It's coming to a city near you. And so what does that mean? Great destruction and great famine is coming to the streets of Babylon. This is not going to be a time of partying. This is not going to be a time of rejoicing. All right, the men of the Lord, we're going to rejoice because we, as it tells you in Isaiah 33 and 6, wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of our times. And these women are not going to have wisdom and knowledge. They are, these women are going to be completely out of their minds. They're going to be in a state of survival. It's going to be pure survival mode. Whatever I need to do to get by, I'm going to do it. And if that means becoming a wife to a man that already has 10 wives, then that's what it's going to be. Because when you go to the scriptures, seven represents completion. This seven women shall take hold of one man. It doesn't mean literally seven women. It could be five women for one brother. It could be three women. It could be 10 women. It could be 20 women. Certain brothers are going to just have uh, abundance, man, in that day. So what's going to happen before that? Matter of fact, let's go back to Isaiah third chapter because the Bible wasn't written in chapters. All right. This was codified later on. This is one, one long scroll. This is really the scroll of Isaiah that we're reading. I'm going to start with verse 24. And it shall come to pass that instead of sweet smell, there shall be stink. And instead of a girdle, a rent. And instead of well-set hair, baldness. And instead of a stomacher, a girding of sackcloth. 
and burning instead of beauty. This happened throughout the history of the nation of Israel. When you go into the Babylonians, when you go into Israel being sieged by the Romans, when you go into various captivities, Israel, the women of Israel were complete spoiled. As it tells you in Mark, the third chapter, the 27th verse, you, you have to bind the strong man and then you can have your way with the house. OK, the, the spoils of war. That's where the word booty comes from. The word booty means spoils of war. That's why the, a woman's backside, a really nice backside is called a booty because that's what women are. They're a possession of men. Now, in this society, women are the possession of the elites, the Rothschilds, the Gettys, the DuPonts, the international bankers that own America. They own the women. And so what do they do? They, they give the women liberty. They give the women freedom to be whores. They give the women the right to tell a man anything. And so the institution of marriage has been completely destroyed in this society. And so these women are walking around proud that I don't need no man spirit. And so what's going to happen? When society collapses, when you can't go to the store and buy bread, when you can't go in the store and buy tampons or other feminine products, when you can't go in the store and buy weave, when the trucks are no longer coming in and out of the city, everything is going to be on shutdown, man. And these women are going to stink, man. They're going to be absolutely disgusting to be around. And so for brothers that find out that seven women shall take hold of one man, and they're reading it like like it's a Puff Daddy video. He's in the jacuzzi. You know, you got one girl handing him champagne. You got another woman feeding him grape. That's, again, that's going to happen in the kingdom. But this prophecy is dealing with a time of great turmoil. This prophecy is dealt really these women are going to be absolutely disgusting, man. You're not going to be walking around like a rap video in slow motion. You're pointing to the DJ. You're pointing to this person. You grab this woman. It's not going to be cool. It's going to be terrifying. It's going to be a horrifying stench of death in the air. Everywhere you go, you're going to hear women screaming from a distance. You're going to have women pulling on your clothes. You're going to have women try to get with you, man. And it's most likely not going to be women that you're attracted to. All right. All of the men of the Lord, we're going to procreate in the kingdom and certain brothers are going to have, you know, you're going to make a lot of babies on the way to the kingdom, but you're going to end up turning down way more women than you get with. All right. If you have five wives, you may end up turning down 50 women. All right. You you have to put yourself in that mind state that you're the prize. All right. As it tells you, and I, matter of fact, let me let me get Isaiah 13. We'll come back to chapter three in just a moment. This is Isaiah 13, verse 12. I will make a man, I will make a man more precious than fine gold, even a man than the golden wedge of Ophir. And when you go into the history of Ophir, that was, that was the finest gold that you could find. Gold is actually very precious, man. It's a precious metal. It has many uses. It has, it's a conductor of electricity. It's good for your health. It has intrinsic value. It's not just some a money that's been given artificial value by the elites to manipulate people. Gold is actually intrinsically valuable. And the Most High is saying he's going to make a man of the Lord more precious than fine gold. Why? Because we're going to be valuable. We're going to have that intrinsic value. We're going to have the strength, the knowledge, the wisdom, the understanding. We're going to know exactly what's going on at all times. And most importantly, we're going to have Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai dealing with us, man. We're going to be eating while these people are starving. So if you're eating while everyone's starving, what does that mean? What, what, is it, what does that look like to a woman to see a man that's thriving while other people are getting put to death? Two words, all right? Meal ticket, all right? You are going to be a woman's ticket out of here, man. And side note, what further proves that these women, these these head wrap harlots that claim to be the daughters of Zion, that they, they really don't believe in the Bible like that. If all of these women that you see on social media, if they really believed in the kingdom of heaven, if they really believed that the men of the Lord were about to inherit the earth and everything in it, if they really believed that we were kings and priests and we were about to take over the earth, what would you see? Every single campsite around the world, you would have a line of women around the corner. They would come to the camp with their head wrapped, bowed down. They'd look for a lord. That That's how women treat men that they believe are actually going to come into power. Look at how women treat a, a professional athlete when he's drafted. Look at how women treat a man that just won the lottery or just came into some inheritance and he starts splurging on, on expensive cars. Look at how women treat men that have power. So the fact that women that allegedly believe they don't treat you like a man that has power. What does that mean? That means they don't really believe that you're about to come into power. If they believe, their behavior will reflect that. Okay, but the Heavenly Father doesn't want them to believe like that because then the camps would be, it would be a zoo, man. Would, you would have Jake come into camp every week, but for the wrong reasons. You know, right now, Jake 
will actually make excuses not to come to camp to spend time with his woman. If these Israelite women actually believe, the camps would be flooded with women, and then you would have all kind of jakes coming to camp for the wrong reasons, man. So it's all spiritual that these women don't really believe. As it tells you in Micah, this is not our rest. The women are going to believe in the kingdom, man. We actually have, it's just like Job's wife. Job's wife, she really believed when Job was prospering, when the Lord was giving Job good. But once the Lord gave Job evil, all of a sudden he realized, oh, oh, you're like one of those foolish women. Yeah, well, that's that's how it is. Women are fickle. So when you go into the scriptures, when you read seven women shall take hold of one man, what does that mean? That's going to be a man that's been made more precious than fine gold. That's going to be a man with substance. That's going to be a man that's, well, I'm going to just put it plainly. It's going to be a stone cold killer, man. You're going to have people out here. It's going to be killer be killed, man. It's not going to be in the time of Oh, I don't agree with the Bible. I, let's agree to disagree. No, if you don't agree with the Bible, you're going to try to kill the men of the Lord. And that's going to backfire horribly. You're going to end up, you know, we have to be careful what we say on these videos. But long story short, the men that are going to survive are not going to be choir boys, man. They're not going to be just random guys go along to get along. Oh, I, I just love people so much. I'm a, I'm a people person. When all hell breaks loose, you're not going to be a people person. When there's no food on the shelves, a nice guy is not going to be what gets you to the kingdom of heaven, man. That Christianity church boy spirit is going to get your throat cut, man. But that's another topic. The point is, the type of men that are going to make it are going to be men of the Lord. That's going to be the men that are made more precious than fine gold. And that's going to be the men that are going to have seven women, a complete number of women take hold of them, man. And that's not going to be, again, I can't stress this enough for new brothers in the faith. This is not going to be pretty. This is not going to be sexy. This is not going to be cute. This is not going to be a rap video, man. This is going to be all hell breaking loose. And you, the Lord's going to be dealing with you. You have to have a spirit of uh, discernment. You have to have a spirit of austerity. You have to have a man spirit on you, man. You can't be one of these thirsty simps because you have Jake. Right now, you have all kind of Jakes that know that they're Israelites, but they haven't repented yet. They haven't put off the old man. They're still in that spirit of of being thirsty. They're still in that spirit of chasing women. During Jacob's trouble, you're not going to chase a woman. During Jacob's trouble, if you see a woman getting chased, it's going to be because someone's trying to steal the food that she has. It's going to be because someone's trying to kidnap her or rape her or take her children or whatever supplies she has. It's not going to, you're not going to see men walking around. Let me holler at you. If you're a woman getting chased, you're going to be running for your life. You're going to be screaming and you're going to get put to death if the Lord's not dealing with you. So going back to Isaiah, the third chapter, it says, thy men shall fall by the sword and thy mighty men in the war. What is that talking about? Armageddon, man. World War Three. All of these soldiers, these young men, a lot of them are going to get drafted. And everyone that goes to World War Three, they're going to die. They're not coming back. You're not going to have a military funeral. You're not going to come back and get benefits. You're not going to be uh, homeless, complaining about how America treats us. So no, everyone's going to die. All right. Everyone that goes to the Middle East is going to die. And that's going to be a lot of people, man. A lot of young men are going to die in this war. And what does that mean? The women are not going to have husbands to marry, man. That's why Isaiah 4 and 1 is going to come to pass. Seven women are going to take hold of one man. They're not going to have, there's not going to be this illusion of monogamy anymore. Because that's all it is. That's all monogamy is. It's an illusion. All right. Jake still has a woman on the side. These women have side niggas now. This, this sexual revolution has, has done nothing but breed disease and distrust in marriages, man. Disorder, it's absolutely disgusting, man. But everything's about to be turned right side up. The Heavenly Father is about to completely do away with Babylon, man. And it's going to be beautiful, but it's also going to be terrifying. It's not going to be a rap video. It's not going to be, it's not going to be cool, man. It's not, you know, when you read it and, you know, Jake will do certain visuals and try to bring Isaiah 4 and 1 to life. But really, Isaiah 4 and 1 is going to be absolutely horrendous, man. It's going to be horrific. It's going to be bloody. You're going to be walking around. If you're a man of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, best believe you're going to be walking around with blood on your shirt. Your woman, she might, she may or may not have access to feminine products. She's going to be bleeding. It's just going to be a bloody day, man. It's just going to be, it's not going to be sanitary. You really have to have your mind right. You have to have your mind fully set on the kingdom of heaven. Because if your mind is set on America, if your mind is set on being comfortable during Jacob's trouble, if your mind is set on some type of rap video with, you know, instead of P. Diddy or Jay-Z, it's you and some women with head wraps. All right. They're not dressed like whores. They have their head wrapped. They're wearing dresses. But you're still in the jacuzzi, though. Like, that's not 
that's not realistic, Jake. You, you're going to be on the move. We're going to be as pilgrims on the earth. And really, in that day, women are going to be a liability, man. Just think about it, man. If you have four wives already and you come across an average looking woman or even a really good looking woman and she has no skill, she has nothing to add to your franchise. She has nothing, no way of benefiting your family. She's just another pretty face and a warm box. But you already have four wives. What incentive do you have to take on another wife? That's another mouth to feed. Again, there's not going to be grocery stores. It's not going to be, I'm going to go to Walmart and get the, no, man. It's going to be full on calamity on the streets, man. So any, any woman that you take on, especially if she has bastard children, that's just more mouths to feed for you. So how is that, how is that in any way, shape or form a rap video? How is that going to be something cool? Like it's not cool, man. It's, it's going to be deadly serious for you and all of your women. Just imagine these women going three to four weeks without running water or any feminine hygiene products, man. You're talking about a stench. These broads are gonna smell like Jonah after he got spewed from the belly of that fish. That's that's what Isaiah 4 and 1 is gonna smell like. It's not gonna be you walking through the club in slow motion with strobe lights. It's not gonna be the finale of For the Love of Ray J, when you come downstairs and you're wearing a blazer and all the women are done up real nice and you pick which one you like, that's not, that has nothing to do with prophecy, man. How is it you coming to the truth and you're prophesying against all of these calamities that are going to befall Babylon? You're saying America's Babylon, which is where you live, but somehow Isaiah 4 and 1 is going to be a rap video. No, man, you're talking about a time of great destruction, calamity, death, and pestilence, man. Diseases, famine. All holy hell is going to be breaking loose on the planet Earth. And you, if you're a man of the elect, it's going to be you surviving a great destruction through the covering of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai and these women surviving through your covering. A man is going to be a covert. That's what the scriptures are saying. So get your mind right, Jake. Verse 26, and her gates shall lament and mourn, and she being desolate shall sit upon the ground. And that goes to being humble, man. When you're the word humility, the root word is humble. It means to be low to the ground. That's what the word humble actually means. That's why when you go into the scriptures, when you humble a woman, that it goes into just breaking her down, man. Just putting that rod of correction on her, man. But let's go back to Isaiah, the fourth chapter. And in that day, seven women shall take hold of one man, saying, We will eat our own bread and wear our own apparel. Only let us be called by thy name. Right? How is a woman called by a man's name? Through the act of marriage, which is sex according to the scriptures. The word marriage means join unto. How are you joined unto a woman to the point where she takes your name? By marriage, man. By popping her. To take away our reproach. And what is that reproach, man? These women have a heavy reproach on them because they're complete enemies of the Heavenly Father. They're, they've made themselves enemies of the creator of heaven and earth, man. Everything that he says to do, they're completely with the opposite. Okay, his dietary law. Don't eat pork. Don't eat shrimp. Don't eat catfish. What's the Israelite woman's favorite food right now? Seafood, man. Catfish. All abominable foods. The Heavenly Father says don't be a homosexual. That's an abomination. The so-called black woman's best friend is a sodomite. She's about getting her hair done by a sodomite. How much more of a reprobate can you be? You have an actual sodomite, which is an abomination, putting heathen hair and sewing it into your head, man. You're you're supposed to be a daughter. But anyway, man, this isn't... This isn't a rebuke video to the black woman. I'm, you know, I'm past that. Brothers in the camp, we're all, we're way past that, man. These women are gone. This, again, this video is for brothers that are new to the faith. These women, they have a very serious reproach, and the Heavenly Father is about to judge millions of Israelite women. Okay, when you go into, when you go into prophecy, the majority of the nation of Israel is women. So when you look at the one third, that that great multitude that's going to be attached to the hundred forty four thousand. That's going to be women and children. But when you look at the two thirds, that's also going to be majority women and children. The majority of people that are going to get saved and the majority of people that are going to have horrifying, brutal deaths is going to be Israelite women and children. That's just simple mathematics, man. You got to you can't be emotional about this thing. These women have a reproach and they have to pay. They have to pay going all the way back to the garden. They're really the reason we're in this condition, man. Now, when you come into the truth, it's all about taking responsibility for your own actions. But these women are also responsible for Jake going off. Jake was supposed to obey the Heavenly Father, starting with Adam. But Jake chose to listen to his woman. But his woman was also supposed to listen to the Heavenly Father. The Eve was supposed to obey Adam, man. She went off first, as Apostle Paul tells you. So these women have a reproach unto this day, man. 
Now let's get an example of what's going to be happening on these streets. This is the book of 2 Kings, chapter 6, verse 28. And the king said unto her, and this king is talking about King Jehoram, which is the king of Israel at this moment. What's going on in the story right now is that the northern kingdom is under siege by the king of Aram. There's actually an army uh, compassing Israel. It's under a siege right now. So there's no food coming into the city, which is exactly what's going to be happening in Babylon. Every American city near you is going to be shut down. There's not going to be food coming in. And let's, let's look at an example of what Israelite women are going to be doing. And the king said unto her, What aileth thee? What's wrong? And she answered, This woman said unto me, Give thy son that we may eat him today, and we will eat my son tomorrow. So we boiled my son. So we boiled my son and did eat him. And I said unto her on the next day, Give thy son that we may eat him. And she hath hid her son. So basically you have two Israelite women, two wicked women that were under siege and they were going through a famine. They were eating leather, leather belts. They were eating, all the food had been gone out, man. They've been eating dogs, stray animals. It just, it's, it's a horrific scene, man. This is not a rap video, what we're reading about. We're reading about two starving women and one slick ass Jake. She told the other one, look, we're gonna eat both of our kids. And they were both with it. So the one Jake, she took her kid and boiled the baby, man. She boiled a child. And they ate the child. Then the next day she went back to eat the other kid and the other lady hit her kid, man. That's that's what's going to be going on in America, man. And it's going to be 10 times worse than this. this. These women today are much worse than women in the ancient world. And there's so many more ways of getting over and being slick. And Jake is just, well, the word Jacob itself means supplanter. All right, the Israelite woman is extremely slick. That's what's going to be going on. You might be, you might walk past a group of women that, look like they're in need, they're in trouble, and they're asking you for help, then the next thing you know, you go over to help them, and some nigga jumps out with a baseball bat, or some group of butch, like all kind of crazy traps are going to be set, and who's going to be falling in those traps? Simps. The type of simp that's going to know he's an Israelite, read Isaiah 4 and 1, and think it's going to be talking about a rap video, think it's going to be all good. This is going to be the type of guy who's going to be the good Samaritan, the nice guy during Jacob's trouble. He's going to be chasing box. He's going to have his nose wide open chasing women in that day. And women, these women are all about setting Jake up. As it tells you, a woman's heart is snares and nets. What is a snare? A snare is a trap. What is a net? A net is a trap. So if you're going into Jacob's trouble with this, I'm about to get seven wives, but I'm about to, I'm about to load up on Hebrew wives, man. The daughters of Zion, the daughters of Sarah, these types of guys, they're going to fall for those traps that these women are going to be setting, man. You're going to get put to death out here if you don't have your mind right. It's all about repenting and being in a, a sober, serious mind state, man. Being a, a man of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai, that's an austere man. An austere man is not going to see a group of women on the side of the road and think, you know what? It's time to get three more wives. No, an austere man is going to be like, look, I'm good right now. I, I got some food in my stomach. I need to fast for a couple of more days. I just need to keep going. Fuck that bitch over there. That's, you know, you're going to have your mind on the kingdom of heaven. You're not going to have your mind on trying to help everybody you see because you're going to know Again, Isaiah 33 and 6, wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of thy times. When you see your people suffering, you're going to know why they're suffering. You're going to know Yahweh had brought this upon them. You're not going to think, oh my God, it's, it's my opportunity. Now's the time. Now's the time to get three more wives. No, the hell with these women, man. We're going to have hundreds of wives in the kingdom. Why would you go out of your way to intentionally multiply defile women when all hell is broken loose and you already have multiple mouths to feed? That doesn't make any sense. Only a simp is going to go into Jacob's trouble with that rap video mentality in his mind, man. And this this video, this lesson is for brothers that are, are serious minded, man. Don't chase these women. These women are going to be chasing you and they have to chase you, man. If your eye is on the prize, if you're moving forward towards the kingdom of heaven, these women are going to have to chase you down, man. You're not going to be in a spot where you're just hanging around loitering during Jacob's trouble and, and going out of your way to help women, man. That's not going to be the spirit that's going to be on a man of the Lord. This is first Timothy chapter two, verse 15. Notwithstanding, she shall be saved in childbearing if they continue in faith and charity and holiness with sobriety. All right. Now, if you were to sum up this entire scripture in one word, what would it be? Wife. Okay. A woman is going to be saved by being a wife. All right. That's what that means. A woman 
a woman of Yahweh Bashim Shai is going to be joined unto a man of the elect. That's how women are going to get saved. You're not going to get saved by being strong and independent. Again, the scripture tells you the Heavenly Father will make a man more precious than fine gold. So if you have that mentality, why would you chase women? Why would you be thirsty? What's crazy is, here it is, it's almost 2020. These women outnumber men. In some cities, it's three to one. In some cities, it's seven to one. Women actually outnumber men, and men are still chasing women. That lets you know that Jake's mind state is completely gone. That lets you know that the pride of these women has reached its height. You actually have a situation where something is more rare and it's chasing something that's, that's plentiful. That doesn't even make sense when you look at supply and demand. You have masses of women chasing a small minority of men, and then you have masses of men chasing just average loser women on social media and in the streets, man. And it's, everything's upside down, man. It's really vexing to just be amongst these people, knowing the truth, especially. But again, when you first come into the knowledge that you're an Israelite, when you read Isaiah 4 and 1, especially if, you, if you're listening to one of these off camps, it's very easy to read that and just think, oh, okay, now it's time. It's time. No, 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 no. It's time in the kingdom of heaven. Now is the time to get your mind right as a man. These women, they have their own. Matter of fact, let's get this. This is back in the book of Isaiah, chapter 32, verse 10. Many days and years shall you be troubled, ye careless women. Matter of fact, let's go up. Let's yeah, let's let's read verse two. And a man, a man shall be as a hiding place from the wind and a covert from the tempest, as rivers of water in a dry place, and as a shadow of a great rock in a weary land. Now, what is that talking about, man? What just just think about see the scriptures deal with metaphors. They deal with painting a picture in your mind. They, it's not just saying, look, a man's gonna be precious. No, it says a man's going to be more precious than fine gold. A man's going to be a hiding place from the wind. That wind is a destruction. Think about rivers in a dry place. Think about if you've been walking in the desert, you haven't had anything to drink for days, and you come across a river. That's what it's going to be like to these women when they come across a man of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. It's going to be like walking in a desert and finding a river of drinkable, clean water. All right, not the Mississippi River, an actual, a real river, man. That's what you're going to be. That's what you're going to represent to these women. So if that's your mentality, why would you be chasing women, man? Why are you going to be in the mentality of a rap video if these women are going to be chasing you just to live? They're going to have to get, they're going to have to take your name on just to survive. That's, that's the power that the Heavenly Father is going to return to his sons, man. You have to keep that in your mind, man. Don't, approach Jacob's trouble with this Instagram mentality. I got to give this chick a like. I got to slide in her DM. I got to tell her how can... No, 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 no. You're the prize, okay? You're the prize of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. We're his jewels, man. It tells you that in Malachi. He's making up his jewels right now. You have to get your mind right. These women, they're going to get right when all hell breaks loose, and it's going to be by force. Let me just go through this real quick. Verse 10. Many days and years shall ye be troubled, ye careless women, for the vintage shall fail, the gathering shall not come. Right? That's going into these different uh, social programs. Uh, all of these women believe in corporate America. They believe in the United States government. They believe in FEMA. They believe in the Democratic Party. Some of them believe in the Republican Party. Now, these women are completely gone. Their souls belong to Babylon. Really, their souls belong to Satan. So when Satan closes the doors on Babylon, these women are going to be completely out there, man. There's going to be two types of people. There's going to be people that the Lord is dealing with, and there's going to be corpses. So when the Lord is dealing with you, and these women, they see the mass death and they see, they feel death chasing them, man. They're going to start chasing a man of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. That's what's going to be going on, man. It's not going to be a club with NBA young boy playing really loud, you know, some old Lil Wayne, the DJs mixing it up. No, man, it's going to be mass death. It's going to be screams and it's going to be a stench. You're going to smell death everywhere you go. You're going to smell women that haven't had access to feminine products in weeks and months. That's what it's going to be, man. It's not going to be a rap video. All right. Verse 11. Tremble ye women that are at ease. Be troubled ye careless ones. Strip you and make you bare and gird sackcloth upon your loins. And that's going into being in a state of mourning, man. These women are at ease in this society. But all of that ease is based on Esau's free money, Esau's uh, jobs, Esau's opportunities, Esau's liberty, liberty to be a whore, liberty to put a man on child support, put your hand in a man's face, raise your voice at a man. All of that's going to be done away with in a twinkle of an eye, man. At the, at the snap of a finger, it's just going to be green light, man. 
the deaf angels are going to let loose on this place. And so if you're still alive, if the Lord's dealing with you, if the Lord has made you a man more precious than fine gold, you need to have your mind right in that day, man. And these women are going to be chasing you. So get out of that. Oh, I'm an Israelite. I could have 20 what? Listen, man, we're about to inherit the earth. Get that through your mind, Jake. We're about to inherit the earth and everything in it. All the people, all the minerals, all the money, the air, the water, the everything, everything in the earth that was created by the Alahayim, okay, which is the elect, if you can receive it, we're about to inherit it, man. You're going to have hundreds of women and thousands of children. So stop chasing women, man. Don't use this grace as an occasion to the flesh. Don't use the laws of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai as an opportunity to increase fornication, man. You need to be putting off the old man. You need to be fasting and praying more, man. Get out of that spirit of chasing women and stop using the holy scriptures as a pretense to chase use the file women on Instagram, man. That's that's weak. That's real weak. Scriptures tell you in 2nd Ezra, the 14th chapter, to put off now the weak nature. All right, when you think mortal thoughts, when you think carnal thoughts, when you're walking and chasing women that you know are defiled, that's, that's a weakness, man. That's a real weak nature. Here it is. The Father's called you into this marvelous light. You know what a real woman is supposed to be. You know what real marriage is. And you're chasing defiled harlots. These women are filthy, man. Matter of fact, since I said that, this is back. We're going to end it right where we started. Isaiah chapter 4, verse 1. And in that day, seven women shall take hold of one man, saying, We will eat our own bread and wear our own apparel. Only let us be called by thy name. Right. The woman is supposed to take your name. You're not supposed to take a woman's name. So what does that tell you? The woman is supposed to look to the man for validation. The woman is going to be chasing a man in that day. Men aren't going to be bowing down on one knee. Can you please, can you please be my liability? Can you please be another mouth to feed? Can you please accept my hand? No, man. The women are going to come bowing, man, to take away our reproach. In that day shall the branch of Yahweh be beautiful and glorious, and the fruit of the earth shall be excellent and comely for them that are escaped of Israel. Now, why does it say escaped? If Isaiah 4 and 1 is talking about a party, why would you have to escape? You escape from calamity. You escape from destruction. You escape from near-death experiences. You don't escape from a party in a jacuzzi. It says, for them that are escaped of Israel, as it is written, it is the time of Jacob's trouble, but he shall be saved out of it. Who is that talking about? The elect, starting with the elect men. We're going to be escaped of the calamity, of the turmoil. Man, It's not going to be a party. Man, It's not going to be a rap video. It's not going to be you in a jacuzzi with champagne surrounded by Instagram models. You know, you had this one Jake. Uh, he wasn't in Great Millstone, I don't believe, but he was giving double honors to the apostles. And, you know, he... His YouTube channel was just filled with lewdness, man. He had a whole video where for an hour he was just going through Instagram models claiming them. Yeah, I claim this one. I claim that one for Jacob's trouble. I claim this one for the kingdom. The Most High didn't tell you to do that. And you've never seen the elders do that. We're not called into this marvelous light to push out a carnal vibration, man. You, you have to understand, Jake is coming out of the world. Jake is coming out of the most defiled, perverse, sexually explicit society that's ever lived, man. Jake... Jake is coming into the truth, really to be cleansed, to be washed by the hearing of the word. And he comes across your video. What type of vibration are you pushing? You have to understand the Israelite man in America has no positive examples of a male role model. He has no concept of biblical marriage. He has no real understanding of what sex is. So when Jake wakes up and he comes across your YouTube channel, he's supposed to be edified, man. You're not supposed to push a spirit of pimp C of P. Diddy, of this rapper, that rap. You have to be mindful of the vibration that you're pushing on the young brothers, man. This is all about the edification of the elect of Israel. We're not supposed to be pushing a carnal, basically a porno with fringes, man. That's not the spirit, okay? But reading on, verse 3, And it shall come to pass that he that is left in Zion and he that remaineth in Jerusalem shall be called holy, even everyone that is written among the living. Now, what does that mean? Everyone that is written among the living, the majority of Israel, two thirds are going to be put to death. They're not written among the living. So what does that mean? Isaiah four and one is talking about a time of great destruction. Why do we keep reading them that are escaped? Everyone that is left, everyone that is survives, everyone that remaineth. All right. The remnant, the remnant of what? The great destruction, the mass death. That's that's what you're supposed to be preparing your mind for. You're not supposed to be preparing your mind for a rap orgy, man. But here's the point. Verse four. When Yahweh shall have washed away the filth 
of the daughters of Zion and shall have purged the blood of Jerusalem from the midst thereof by the spirit of judgment and by the spirit of burning. Right, Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai is going to have to wash away the filth from the daughters of Zion. So what does that mean? That means they're filthy. Why would you chase something that's filthy? If you're a priest, if you're a king, why are you chasing something that's filthy? That doesn't even make any sense, Jake. You have to put your mind in the state of, I'm the prize. I'm being purified as gold, and I'm going to be more precious than fine gold in that day. That's the mentality you need to walk with. And once you do that, once you accept the basic truth of the scriptures, you'll never look at these women the same way again, man, ever. It's, it's impossible to have the Holy Spirit and be thirsty. Those two things don't go together. Once you're anointed with this oil, you look at these women for what they are. You look at these heathen for what they are. And you look at your brother for what he is. He's a servant of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. He's a man made in the image of the Heavenly Father, man. This, this truth is supposed to change your outlook, the way you view yourself and everyone around you, the way you view the environment. Okay, I'm responsible for this. I'm, this is my earth, man. This is our creation, man. We're the Allah Hayim, all right? So Abba Ratazadis was edifying. Again, for young brothers coming into faith, Isaiah 4 and 1 is not going to be uh, a celebration. There is going to be a celebration after the destruction. All right, you can read about that in Revelation. Again, Isaiah, it's going to be a beautiful time, and we look forward to that, and we hasten that day. But you can't go into, again, Isaiah 33 and 6, wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of thy times. You have to have wisdom to know, all right, this is a time for mirth. This is a time for mourning. This is a time for celebration. This is a time of great destruction. You have to be able to discern the prophecies through the spirit, man. You can't just pick up a scripture that talks about seven women and think, oh, okay, this is great. It's party time. No, it's destruction time, man. We're on the cusp of the greatest destruction in human history. And your mind should be focused on salvation, man, first and foremost. So with that, I want to give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashem Yahweh Shai, Bahashem Rahachwadash, double honest to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone, and Shalom to the hopeful elect.